Ah, ah, ah. 
we thank you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your life as a ransom. We thank you for your blood as a propitiation. We thank you for reconciliation. We bless you and we exalt your holy name. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, someone shout the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I greet you all in Jesus' name. God bless you. It's good to have Pastor Reggie back. Amen. When they were singing, it was the blood. I can see him in the spirit jumping. Amen. That's going to happen soon. Amen. Also, I want to give, greet Mama. In Africa, we say Mama, Mommy. How are you, man? Thank you for coming. God bless you. Let's welcome. We will say Mama Corinne. Corinne's mother. <laughs> I greet you, my man. God bless you. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Uh, Pastor Martin, thank you for that uh, exhortation. But it's okay. Can I add a little bit to it? Uh, actually, I have a series that I'm teaching. And how do we do that? I have a series that I haven't finished. The four, fourfold scriptural 
definition of Christ's death. Number one, ransom. His death as a ransom. Number two, his death as a propitiation. Which means, we talked about that last week, propitiation. It means mercy seat. Mercy seat. Remember, I showed you the Ark of the Covenant? On top of the Ark of the Covenant, inside the Ark, we said there was Aaron's uh, staff and tablet and uh, manna. And then, on top, I try my focus was the top of the box. You remember last week? The top of the box, where you have the two angels spreading, spreading their what? Their wings. Those angels are cherubim. Their assignment is to cover the throne of God. So what they were doing, they were covering the throne of God. And that's what God told Moses, I will meet with you in between the cherubim. In between. Anytime you see a vision and you see an angel spreading, that, if I were you, I would prostrate and begin to worship. That means God is there. If God is not there, you will not see a cherubim. No, you will not see. The assignment is to what? To cover the throne of God. But seraphim are different. Seraphim introduce us to the glory of God. When you see a seraphim in the, in, in, in the spirit realm, that means you are bound to be connected to the glory realm. So the mercy seat... So the word propitiation means the blood of Jesus is our mercy seat. Woo! His blood, his life is our mercy seat. So propitiation means what? Mercy seat. It means what? Covering. That's why I love that song they sang two weeks ago. That we are covered under the blood. Have you seen that song? Under the blood. You don't know what you are saying. You don't know the extent of what you are saying. That means propitiation. You are under the blood of Jesus. Your weaknesses are covered under the blood. Your sins are covered under the blood. Hallelujah. You are covered under the blood of Jesus. The mercy seat is upon you. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh. When they were singing, they, they don't know the depth of what they were singing. You are covered under the blood. That means when God looks at you, he don't see you. He sees the blood. And not the blood of goats. Not the blood of cow or bull. But the blood of Jesus. That's the DNA of God. It's not the DNA of man. Hallelujah. I am covered in the blood. We are covered in the blood. That's the word propitiation. Covering. Also overlook. When God sees the blood, it will overlook your sin. It will overlook your weaknesses. It will overlook your faults. Also mean pardon. Pardon. To pardon someone. Let me just bring the Palm Sunday. Let me just share a little bit with you on Palm Sunday. Then I'll try to get to my message. If I don't finish it, we will continue one of this Friday. Palm Sunday is so significant. What it means today 
was an official day that Jesus was actually declared as the Messiah. Because Prophet Zechariah prophesied. Uh, Zechariah 9 9. He said, Rejoice greatly, O you daughter of Zion. Shout, O you daughter of Jerusalem. Rejoice. Because this day was prophesied many years back that are you going to know? The Messiah, because the Messiah will triumphant enter into Jerusalem. He said, it was, it was a big day. That's why you see people throw their palm on the palm. Normally, one of the significant things, when you put palm on the street, you only put palm on the street for a king to walk on it. What they were doing, some of the private they didn't know what they were doing. They were declaring Jesus as the king of kings. They pulled not only the power, some of them took their clothes and they put it on the floor that he is the king. The lord of law. So today actually was official day that everybody said, ah, he is the Messiah. Because of this prophecy. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. Your king is what? Coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding. On a what? On a what? Prophetic is very good. I will this is my message. Some of us, we have vision. We have dreams. But we don't understand it. Like this, when you see a donkey. And someone is riding... On a donkey. That means they are coming in peace. They are coming to you. And they are bringing what? Peace. That's exactly what Jesus came to do. His first coming. It was not on the horse. If you come on the horse. It's a different meaning. No it did not. The second coming. Is not coming on a donkey. Come on, somebody talk to me. The second coming is not coming on a donkey. The second coming is coming on a horse. As a conquest. It's coming to conquer. But this coming, it came in peace. It came for salvation. It came to deliver us. It came to set us free. Hallelujah. Lowly, very humble coming. Humble what? coming. Even the way he was born. He was born in a manger. A smelly place. Stink place. So that revealed to me what he came to do. He came to clean our mess. It's okay, you can clap. It's all our mess. He came to clean our mess. That's why you don't say, I did not come to be served. I came. No, you didn't hear me. He came to serve. He came to clean. Ayakatu Kobaha. How you get prophetic revelation? When you see a donkey, find out what are the significant or the assignment of a donkey. Number one. <laughs> You can use this in prophetic when you have a dream. Dreams are reality and symbolic. What is the duty of a donkey? Say that again. Carry every load. Carry what? Burdens. 
Jesus came to carry our body. He said, my yoke is light. Bring your body to Jesus. Bring your problem to Jesus. Is a carrier of body. Some of us are carrying what we are not supposed to carry. You are not designed to carry those burdens. Give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. He came to bring peace. He came to bring what? To bring salvation. So today was a big day. For every Christian. For everyone in the world. Because Jesus was declaring his messiahship. He was declaring that he's the king of kings. He was declaring he's the son of God. The son of the world of the living God. That is the deity of Jesus. That's why we say Jesus is 100% God, 100% man. But the thing is, he didn't function on earth as God. He functioned on earth as what? As man. Amen. Why is that? Because before he came on earth, he left the glory. His glory in heaven. Then he came as a what? As a man. So this picture, seeing Jesus on the earth, he was declaring that he is the son of the living God. And he is the king of the world. And that's why the palm on the floor, they are closed on the floor. Because you always, those days, you do that for a what? A king. He was working. When I was growing up in Africa, what we do, we take the pan and we wave it. We do that here too in America. Amen? We wave it to remember and declaring that Jesus is the Messiah. Some people are still waiting for another Messiah to come. He is the one. <laughs> so people missed him the Jewish people missed him they still waiting for another Messiah to come Jesus is the Messiah he is the king of kings he is the lord of lord and say Hosanna in the highest now and I will stop what is the meaning of Hosanna Hosanna means Save now. Save now. In other words, salvation is now, not tomorrow. Save now. And that's what they were screaming. Hosanna! Hosanna! Save us now! Save now! Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. But it's something that uh, today they receive him as Messiah. Then at the end of the week, they say, kill him. Amen. Crucify him. Amen. Kill him. The same people that were saying, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Within a week, not even one month or one year, say so crucify him. But I thank God today that they crucify him. Amen. I bless God that they crucify him. The scripture said, if they knew what they were doing. If they knew what they were doing, they would not have crucified the Lord Jesus. Another time I will come with this message. I have a series here. Maybe next year we begin to do it for a month. The most significant of Hosanna. And uh, how Jesus came. He came in peace. He came to save now. He came to save now. 
And after that, he went to prepare for his death. Can we say amen? Because he knew that he was going on the cross. That was his purpose. That's why he came. Amen? And I remember even in Matthew, when he sent the disciples, remember the scripture? He sent two disciples to go and loose the donkey. That donkey, no one has ever rode on it. He sent them to go. Lose the donkey. And if anyone asks you, tell them, the Lord is in need of it. The Lord is in need of it. I will move to my message. God bless you. Amen. Now, let's go to the message. I will try to be brief and conclude today. If not, I will preach it another day. Fourfold scriptural definition of Christ's death. Number one is death as a ransom. Is death as a ransom. Jesus has to come and die to pay for our iniquity, for our sin. So his death was as a ransom. His life. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. So somebody has to die in our place. Amen? As a ransom. Number two. Is death a propitiation? Is death a Propitiation. The scripture tell us propitiation by his blood. By his blood. Now we will move to number three. I will start from there today. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. Romans chapter 5, verse 10. Remember the first one is dead, is as a what? Ransom. Can we say ransom? Amen. Number two, can we say that? Propitiation, which means mercy seed. It means covering. It means to overlook. It means to pardon. It means to pardon. Amen. God has to do that. Why? The death of Christ is set forth as a ground or the ground on which a righteous God can pardon a guilty and sinful race without him compromising his righteousness. So that he won't what? Compromising his righteousness. If Jesus didn't pay the price and God received us back, that means God is what? Compromising his righteousness. There's no way God will compromise is what? A righteousness. So somebody has to pay the price. Amen? Amen? And none of us can pay the price because one sin, all sin. And God needs a what? A perfect sacrifice. He has to be perfect. He has to be pure. That's why God himself has to come. Amen? God himself has to what? Come. You need a perfect sacrifice. What do I mean by that? You need a pure blood. Pure what? Blood. If one sin, all sin, that means there's no pure blood. So God himself has to come in a form of man. We read the scripture the other day. He said he has to make him like his brethren. He was made like what? His brethren. So God has to use his own DNA. And make atonement for us. Let's go to Romans 5.10. We'll move to number 3. Romans 5.10. It says, For if we were enemy, for if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, to the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled we shall be saved by his blood. We shall be saved by his blood. 
Reconcile. What is reconcile? Reconcile means to bring back. Means to restore back to the former state. You have to reconcile to bring us back. Amen? But without propitiation, there is no reconciliation. There is no reconciliation. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.18. I will be giving you a lot of scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5.18 and 19. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation, not only Jesus died and reconciled us back to God, but God also has given the church. Has given the church a what ministry of what of reconciliation. What do I mean by that? What does the scripture mean by that? Being a Christian is just the beginning of Christianity. Can I get a bigger amen for that? Being a Christian is the beginning. If you are saved, is the beginning of the work that God has given to us. That means the ministry of reconciliation, it means outreach, bringing people to Jesus, has been given to the church. Amen. Has been given to the church. This year, we're going to start our outreach ministry in reconciliation. Actually, everybody is called to evangelize. Mama, I'm getting a small amen. Nobody's saying amen. Everybody is supposed to do what? Everybody is in that ministry of reconciliation. Amen. We are giving that ministry. What is that ministry? To bring people back to God. The same way Jesus did. We won't give our life because he already gave his life. But we have to tell them about Jesus. We have to witness to the lost of the world. And tell them what Jesus has done. That is the gospel. Amen. Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? You are in the ministry of reconciliation. I say you are in the ministry of reconciliation. You are in the ministry of reconciliation. We are in the ministry of reconciliation. What Jesus did, we have to go and duplicate it to bring people back to God. I said to myself, is Jesus died for all? All should be for Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a ministry of reconciliation. We have to tell our co-workers about Jesus. We have to tell our friends about Jesus. Everybody in this church, you are in that ministry. It's okay, few amen again. I'm not moving forward. Everybody is in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. That's so powerful. I said to myself, if Jesus did all of these things for us, he died for us, he paid the price for us, he shed his blood for us, he was innocent. Jesus never sinned. He lived a righteous life. Amen. If he died for us, why? We also should die for him. Some people are even scared. Amen. I will explain. <laughs> if Jesus died for us, we should do what? What do I mean by that? Die to self. Amen. Some people get scared and say, oh no, I'm not ready to go yet. I don't mean that. Now, let me slow down here. What is death? Say it again. Separation. Death is what? Separation. When the Bible said, for the wages of sin is what? What does that mean? Separate from who? From God. To separate from God. There are three types of death. Amen, church? Our people don't like to talk about death. 
But it means what? Separation. There are three types of death. Number one, spiritual death. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, actually, they introduced these three deaths. Do you believe God created them to live forever? I mean, know that. If you don't know that, I'm telling you now. We were created to live forever. Adam and Eve were created to what? To live forever. I can prove it to you in the scripture. To live forever. The kind of life God wants us to live is not struggling, struggling for living. Oh. It's not struggling, work hard for living. God is a provider. God provided everything for Adam and Eve before he created them. Can I talk to you a little bit more? The first creation was no man. The second day was no man. The third day was no man. The fourth day was no man. The fifth day was no man. The sixth day. Uh -huh. Half day. Half the first day. The first half. Of the sixth day, it was no man. God was creating animals. He was creating goat. He was creating cow. He was creating animals. He created everything. He created them for who? For who? For who? Say for us. He created everything for them. When I study this, at the end of the first half, of the sixth day, when he created everything, in theology, there's something we call divine pause. He paused. And after you're walking all day, day one, day two, day three, day four, day six, and you have, then you pause. He didn't rest yet because he didn't finish. He reserved the best. He paused. He said, now, let us create man in our own image. Everything that God created, he commanded them. Everything. Go read Genesis. Let there be light. There's a partition, demarcation between light and darkness. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Let it be light. Let it be firmament. Let it be everything. But for man, he didn't call you into existence. Ah, that's what they say. What? A divine? Hmm. This was a special assignment. You have to Pastor Marshall, I can't. I can. Where is she? There was touching. Even the word that God used changes. When you study the scripture, the, in the beginning, he said, Elohim said. Elohim said. Elohim said. Elohim said. But when they get to man, there was a word, divine cross. The Bible said, Jehovah said. Because that's what Jehovah has to do with relationship. Covenant making God. He said, Jehovah said, let us. There was divine pause. But when he was creating everything, there was no pause. Amen. Let there be. And it was. Let there be. When we get to man. Amen. Our creation was two form, two, two fold. Form. Wow. After yes. Then the next one is what? Wow. He put his life. We call it Zoe life. Can you say that? Z-O-E. Zoe life. You know what that means? Anytime I teach this, I feel good. 
to know that the life of God that the life of God is in me. Hallelujah. It lives inside of me. The life of God, the essence of God. Amen. That's why I disagree when the people that said that the angels are higher than us. No. No. Actually, that woman, that woman, it means lower than Elohim, not angel. That's what David was saying. What about mankind? Why are you so mindful about man? What is this about man? David too was. I know I miss your getting on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? David says, What about man? That you're so mindful of him. He said, You make him a little lower, not an angel. It means you make him lower than an Elohim. Lower than angel, not an angel. That's wrong. That's God. He breathed. And you gave, you crown him with what? With glory. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? All right. Amen. I can go on and go on and go on, on that. Amen. We were not created to suffer. We are created to enjoy all that God has created. God is a provider. That's why he created man when? Last. It was in the glory realm. I truly believe the Garden of Eden was what? Glory realm. When they sinned, that's where I'm going. When they sinned, why did God move them out of the Garden of Eden? When they sin, he has to move them what? Why? He moved them out because that realm was a glory realm. It was a realm that you don't sow to reap. You don't what? You don't sow to what? To reap. It's a realm that you reap to sow. And when you sow, your harvest don't take forever. It was what? A glory realm. Can I prove it to you some more? It was what? A glory realm. When Adam was created, what happened? God did not create him as a baby. Hello? God did not create Adam as a one, as a baby. Guess what? There's no one to babysit him. Amen. <laughs> There's no babysitter. Amen. Amen. God is in heaven. The angels are in heaven. Amen. He created him and there's no babysitter. So he didn't create him as an infant. He created him as a what? I know you never thought about that. As a grown man. That's what tells me in the, in, in the supernatural realm, in the glory realm, there's no infancy. There's no what? Infancy. There's no one going to babysit you. That's why some of us, oh God, can I go a little deeper? That's why some of us, we are not ready for heaven yet. God is preparing us to be matured to live in heaven. Church is a school of maturity. Oh God of heaven. Oh God of heaven. Church is a what? It's a school of maturity to train you where we train the babies uh, to grow up. When you get to heaven, nobody is going to babysit you. When you get to heaven, you are on your own. In the glory realm, there's maturity. Hello? 
I know this is mature word. Can we handle this? In the glory realm, there's no infancy. Everything is mature. There's no end. There's no beginning. And there's no end. Everything is like a circle. No point one to point two. <laughs> no past, no future. Everything is in the now. So, that realm, it was a glory realm. That's why Adam was created as a what? A dot. Eve was created as a what? As an adult. But if we don't call that creation, we call Adam, it was created, direct creation. But Eve was what? Indirect. It was what? Indirect. Adam was actually created from the earth. But Eve was not created you don't understand. God is in a business of multiplication. You don't want to keep on, he's a good businessman, very smart businessman. You don't want to keep on creating, 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 creating. All you have to do is to create one and duplicate. And duplicate. So, he was what? Indirect creation. God took, put him to sleep. That was the first surgery, actually. That was the first surgery. I'm serious. There's no way you would take his head rib without cutting it, huh? Put him to sleep. And then what? Took a rib. And he formed a womb. Womb. Man. Man. Womb. Man. Indirect creation. And the moment he created Eve as well, not as infant. Was it an infant? I don't think because God didn't teach Adam how to babysit. Was not an infant. I said, What? <laughs> Was a grown woman. Amen. How do I say, How do I know that? Well, the moment Adam saw. The moment Adam woke, he woke up and he saw Eve. My, my, my. Shake it, put up. You see, God knows what you like. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you that are looking for man, looking for woman, stop looking. Ask God to bring. And that's why we have problems because we are looking. Looking for husband, looking for wife, stop looking. Begin to pray for God to let your husband or wife find you. Amen. But every Christian fellowship, make sure you dress nice, nice and present yourself. Don't just stay home, you'll find nobody at home. Are you hear what I'm saying? Because that's what God did. He created people. Go back to my message. He created who? Eve. And he presented her to him. He pre- what? To him. He didn't just put him anywhere. He just presented him. And he looked and said, my, my. Oh my God. This is a what? A bone of mine. Oh, you're going to enjoy single and married class. Honest, you're going to love it. This is what? The bone of mine. The flesh of mine. And she shall become what? Now. God moved them out. I've proven to you Garden of Eden was a what? Glory them. Have you said glory them? Was it what? 
glory realm. Where you don't need to harvest before you sow. Amen. You don't need to reap before you sow. Over there, you reap, then you sow. Not walk and reap. Everything is already provided. Everything is right there. But they were responsible to take care of gardening of Eden. But when they see this one going, that's how death happens. Death is what? Separation. Can we say separation? The moment they seen what happened, they separated. They start hiding. Separation. That's their spiritual death. And God took something out of Garden of Eden. Who remember that? God said that man are now like us. Now we have the knowledge of good and evil. It was introduced to us by Satan. So God said, wow, now they know good and they know what? Evil. Let us move out the tree of life. Pay attention to that. Move what? The tree of life. If we don't move them out, they will go and take what? The tree of life. Because there, the tree of life is there. If we are there and you eat the tree of life, you cannot die forever. It was the sin that separated them. Oh, when you read that scripture, what was protecting the tree of life? The flaming swamp and what? Oh, I just thought about it. Which angel? Cherubim. Cherubim. Why was it cherubim? The glory realm. Yeah, it was what? Glory realm. God didn't move the sword. That's the glory. The sword you hear is the glory of God. The angel, anywhere you see glory of God, you must see cherubim. They cover the glory. Are you with me? They cover the what? The glory. So that was a glory then. So what God did, God evicted them. It was an eviction actually. God evicted them. Wounding God, I know it's so simple, but there's a lot of revelation there. It's a lot of myth there. God evicted them, but do you know why God evicted them? The sin, but whose fault? Who sin? All of them sin. Adam sin. You sin. But whose fault? Why? The instruction was what? The instruction was given to him, right? Right? That's one. What he did not, there's something he did not do. You get it close. I've been teaching this now. You should know, church. You should know. You should know. God is a God of order. There's order in the church. There's order at home. God put the apostle, the pastor, the what? The head of the? And God put who in, at home? The man. Man, you need to learn how to live and how to rule. There's difference between rule and leading and ruling. Amen? And if you're a single mother, you are in charge of your home. Sometimes you got to rule, not leading. Sometimes in leading, we get people involved, we get their opinion, they will make decisions. In ruling, we are going right. Either you like it or not, 
Pastor Masha, we are going right. You, Sam Diamo, better follow me. That's ruling. Adam should have rebuked his wife. That part. Rebuke her. Say, no. God said we should not eat. Adam was in love. He fell in love. He fell in love. There's a saying, love is. So he was blind. Everything goes. He fell in love. We don't fall in love. All the young people don't say nothing. Pastor. You don't fall in love. When you fall in love, you won't be able to see straight. What do you do? You grow in love. Get to know the person you are falling to. When fall, what? I see some Christians, they fall in love to people that don't understand love. What is love? No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about agape love, unconditional love, spiritual love, hallelujah, selfless love. I'm talking about that. You don't fall for somebody that don't even know Christ. If you are not in Christ, you don't know love. Hear me. Did you hear me? It's okay. I don't want it the heart. No. If you are not in Christ, you don't know true love. You don't know true love. And there are four types of love. Can I just know? There are four types of love. Arrows love. That's what they know in the world. They love you because. They love you because they pay. You pay, the, they pay, you pay their rent. That's conditional. That means there's a string attached to that love. The day that string is going to cut off, that love is over. Or maybe they pay your lunch. The day they stop paying your love, your, your curly goat. I love you, but I got to go. <laughs> Unconditional love is a love that ain't going nowhere. It's a love that you're not seeking your own. Because love does not seek its own. Love always seeks others. Amen. Hello? Hi? Are you still there? Where have you been? There's arrows. There's torch. That's family law. There's phileo. Phileo, brotherly love. That's what Peter didn't get. One day I will teach this. When I study, I study Greek, Hebrew, everything. That's what Jesus was telling after he died and resurrected. He was telling Peter, do you love me? He was telling Peter, do you agape me? Peter gets upset now. He has him over 30 times. But Peter was replying, I phileo you. Brotherly love. Brotherly love. Nobody was talking about that until Jesus paid the price. But Jesus said, Do you love me? Ah. Do you agape me? He said, I feel you. You know what? I love you like a brother. Jesus was talking unconditional love, selfless love. Amen. The Bible said he manifested his love towards us that he died on the cross when we don't know him. When we rejected him. Amen. Can you continue to love somebody that is talking about you? I thank God for those that didn't hastily say yes. Are you with me? So the first three type of death, number one, Spiritual and first thing that happened in the garden, separation from God. Number two, 
Physical. Thank you. Physical. I mean physical death. Somebody family died the other day. And we went there, Pastor Macho and I. And I said, say, Mama, just change location. Mama, I love the Lord. She just what? Change location from this body to the mansion of the change location. Death is relocating. Physical death as a Christian. Relocate. To be absent from the is to be what? So the first one is what? Spiritual. Second is third is eternal separation. I prophesy none of you will experience that. None of you will experience that. Because Jesus already conquered that. If you're in Christ. There's a scripture said in resurrection. There are two types of resurrection. I taught that last year. You remember? Two types of resurrection. The first resurrection. Jesus. The Bible said he was quickened. In the spirit. It was what? Quickened in the spirit. If it did not, if it was not quickened in the spirit, his body would never resurrect. The Bible said it was quickened, it was made alive in the what? Spirit. And that spirit, I'll give you the scripture. In Genesis chapter 6, sir, he went and preached to them. The preaching is not to win them over, but the preaching is proclaiming, is declaring, I am alive. I am alive forever. I live forever. Hallelujah. You think you can kill me? You think I am alive forever and forever and forever. In another, oh God, can I talk to you? In other words, what he was doing, he was making an announcement that I am alive. You try to kill me. You try to stop me. I am alive forever. Forever and forever. Glory to God. He was quickened in the spirit. If you are a Christian, you will never experience eternal death. You will never experience it. Hallelujah, because Jesus paid the price. See, we haven't actually received the full manifestation of what Jesus has done. No! The spirit was quickened. When I shake him, the idiot for her. When we're going to experience that, it's rapture. <laughs> Have you seen a man caught up in the heaven? The manifestation will happen. We will talk up with him in the heaven. Are you hearing what I am saying? He was quickened and he went to this prison. Who is he preaching to? To those fallen angels that turned them, they, they materialized to man and sleeping with women and having children. You know why? They want to pollute Adamic seed. Oh, go read it. Genesis chapter 6. There's a war, what do you call them? Then they have a lot of giants. Na, na, uh, Napoleon. That's what happened. Having giants. Because angels can what? Materialize. They turn human. You know what they were doing that? Because of Genesis 3 16. Genesis 3 15. That's the what? So they were attacking women. It's part of the plan to pollute the Adamic sea. So they were attacking who? Women. Sometimes I look at the devil and say, man, you are so dumb, you don't know it. I'm serious. That's why Revelation, when Jesus speaks in parable, it's not for everybody. What God was saying, he said, I don't need man obligation 
So we're attacking women. So to, to pollute. Yeah, that you see, they didn't know that God himself is coming. Are you kidding me? Number three, eternal youth. Somebody was preaching. And after he preached to them in prison, what the next thing he did? What's the next thing? His spirit was preaching. After he preached to them, his spirit then went to the body. He went to the tomb. Then when that spirit got to the tomb, the body changes. He became what? Glorious. No longer human body. He's there before, but it was a glorious body. That's why the stones that they used to block the, the, uh, the, the tomb, the angel opened it. They didn't open it for Jesus. They opened it for those that are coming to witness that Jesus, <laughs> that Jesus is alive. And alive, and alive, and alive, and alive forever and ever and ever. The grave could not hold him down, death could not hold him down because now he has a glorious body. Hallelujah. That's what I'm saying. The, the, what Jesus did, we have only seen the full manifestation. When we, when our spirit is quickened, you will start and fall up again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so number one, ransom. Number two, propitiation. Number three, reconciliation. Oh, let me give you one another time. <laughs> It's a scripture that says Jesus removed enmity. The scripture says what? Removed the enmity between God and exactly. He removed. That's the active part. Because there was enmity between God and man. Enmity to what? To fellowship. Remember the separation. It's a separation. So God Jesus had to come. He's dead. After what? Remove the enmity between God and man. So that we can what? Approach God. There was a barrier for us to fellowship with God. Amen. So that barrier was what? Removed. Another scripture said, he killed it. He killed it. He destroyed it. He removed it. Is that remove the barrier? That, that is active reconciliation. Passive reconciliation is that the change, the remover, the active now bring change to man. Our status change. We can now approach God. Hallelujah. We can now approach God. We can now. Talk to God. Imagine we got to wait until the day of our torment yes. and carry all our body and carry all our sin. Yes. And one priest will go into the holy of holy yes. to do our torment. We're not even sure if we will come back. <laughs> We're not sure because some of the priests don't come back. You mean that? Can I talk to oh God? That's why they put chains. They put chains on their waist. They put bell. Pay 
based on their movement, they can say, okay, he's still alive. <laughs> if he die, nobody wants to go. I ain't going there. I'm going to put him out. That was before Jesus paid the price. But now, we can go freely to the throne of grace. Because the barrier has been moved. Come on, somebody bless God. The barrier has been removed. You can go to God 24-7. Amen. You don't need to come to me to get to God. Go direct. I remember when I was growing up in Africa, I was in a boarding school. It looked like a village somewhere there. So, once, sometimes we want to call, they have here too in America, you want to call your parents, and we have to queue. And then, call the operator. Yeah, we have you here. Come on. Years back, you have to call the operator, then the operator will connect you to your parents. You know, sometimes, the operator don't pick up the phone. <laughs> How many know? You would know, Pastor Lisa. You guys would know. You have to go on the phone. Everybody line up and waiting. Hurry up! I want to talk. <laughs> and then you are not calling direct. That's your upsetting thing. I can understand if I'm calling direct. So I have to call a man or a woman, and they connect me. The devil is a liar. <laughs> then sometimes you wait and you wait and you wait and, and you wait and you wait and you wait <laughs> and you wait and, and sometimes at the end of the day you don't even get to talk to your parents. Thank God now. It's a direct call. The operator has been moved. <laughs> The operator has been moved out of the way so we can connect to God directly. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Now, the moving of operator is the moving of enemy that didn't allow us to get to God. That's the word reconciliation. The active God, Jesus. Because God was propitiated and then Spirit reconciliation. The blood. Then reconciliation. Number four. I would give scripture. You know it. Ah, it's good though. You know it. Substitution. Substitute. Jesus is our substitute. What is substitution? I remember when I was playing basketball, when you play a little bit, they said somebody needs to replace you. To substitute you. To replace you. Amen. But this one, we are the one that's supposed to go on the cross. We are the one that's supposed to die. And Jesus said, God said, you got to go. So if they die with their sin, they will resurrect. Then God himself, after all, come in our place. Substitution. I have scripture, I'll give you another kind of time as well. Substitute. He received the reward of our disobedience. The reward of our disobedience, he received it. But we receive the reward of his obedience. Substitute. Write this down quick. This scripture. Substitute. Let me take scripture. Somebody have to know this. Maybe he will give you the revelation of Jesus. Substitute. To replace. Isaiah 56, 53, 6, please write it down. Isaiah 53, 6. As we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of 
all of us. Wow. The Lord has what? Laid on him the iniquity of all of us. First Peter 2.24, please write it down, amplify. He said, he personally carried our sin in his own body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from the penalty and power of sin and live for righteousness. For by his womb, we were healed. Also write it down, 1 Peter 3.18. 1 Peter 3.18. 1 Peter 3.18, I will read Amplify quick. For Christ, the Messiah himself, died for sins once and for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. The just for the unjust. The innocent for the guilty. That he might what? Do you see reconciliation there? He has to do all of this. The righteous for the unrighteous. Substitute. The unjust for what? For the, the unjust, the just for the unjust. Substitute. The innocent for the in substitute. Why? That he might? What's that? Reconciliation. That have to happen. Because God will not compromise his what? His righteousness. So he can what? Bring us to God. How did he bring us to God? Oh, the word is so. How did he bring us to God? By removing the enmity. By removing the what? The barrier. So we can approach God. That's the active reconciliation. And the passive is that that causes what? Change. How? We look on the cross. Because of the cross. Because of his blood. Passive. Amen? Amen. Another scripture quick. Because I don't know how we do this again. First Corinthians 5, 7. Please write it down. First Corinthians 5, 7. It says, cleanse out the old leaven so that you may be a new batch. Ooh, hallelujah. Just as you are still on living. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been. Do you see that? Say Passover. Say Passover. What does that mean? <laughs> Passover means what? What's the Greek meaning of Passover? Passover. Pass what? When you read Genesis chapter 12, it was not time for Jesus to be crucified. God still made a provision. Remember? The blood of Jesus. That was the blood of Jesus when you see the prerequisite of the blood. So I'm not your what? The post. When the angel of death come, what happened? He passed what? Why? Come on, somebody said the propitiation. Come on, somebody said the blood. Come on, somebody said the blood. Come on, say the blood. When you see the blood of Jesus, you don't have permission to come into my house. They will pass over. Oh, God. Pass over me from what? Death to life. Old to. That's why when they eat the Passover lamb, do you know how they have to dress? They have to dress up. You put on your belt. See, when I eat, when I come home, let me tell you, when I want to eat, I take off my jacket, I take off my... Hallelujah. When I finish eating, it's time to sleep. But this is different. Be ready. Wear your belt. Wear your shoes. Wear your jacket. If you have a backpack, Put it on. And you eat it with haste. Oh, you eat it with what? Haste. Why haste? Come on, somebody say Hosanna. Come on, somebody say Hosanna. 
Come on, somebody say Hosanna. Hosanna mean what? Say when? Next week? Next month? Next year? In five years? In ten years? In twenty years? Salvation is for now. Salvation is not for tomorrow. This is. You know why? They dress because the angel is coming. You got to eat the Passover lamb. Oh, God, I can go a little deeper. Even that lamb, you got to finish it. You can't leave some of it. You got to eat it. You eat the head. We call that Ishewu. You eat the head. You eat the stomach. You eat everything. If you cannot finish it, oh, brother, you're going to help me eat the lamb. You're going to help me eat the lamb. You got to finish it. Trust me, I will finish mine. If you cannot finish yours, bring it. We're going to help you. What does that mean, though? What does that mean? Nowadays, we see preachers, they only preach part of the word of God. Who is the Lamb of God? Who is Jesus, the Word? They only preach part of the world. They only preach prosperity. And prosperity. Every Sunday, prosperity. Also, always preach something different. We got to eat everything about Jesus. We got to put the meat inside of us. We got to read from Genesis to Revelation. Are you hearing me? Even we have some churches, they call themselves Old Testament church. Some call themselves New Testament church. I'm here to tell you, we are New and Old Testament church. Somebody say yes. Yeah. We eat everything. We eat everything. Hallelujah. The word of God is so good. man. Sometimes I can't stop. You got to stop me. I want to eat everything. If they cannot finish it, you give it. But why are they dressed like that? From life, quick. You know, when you eat it, it's not time to pack. It's time to go. You are crossing over to another. May the Lord bless you. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's bless His all in name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have to finish that. Number one. Ransom. Number two. We're talking about the death of Christ. Meaning, definition. One is ransom. Two is. Three is. There's two types of reconciliation. Then the last one, substitute. Take this message and preach it to your friend. Don't hold on to it. It's the message of the cross. It's the message of the cross. Amen? Amen. We're going to take our tithe and offering. Amen? If you need an envelope, please lift your hands. Our usher will give you an envelope. Uh, we have a lot of classes that we also time to come. We have a leadership training as time goes on. Those that are faithful. Amen. Those that are faithful will start a leadership class as well. Amen. Every pool with a job, with a business. That's why she's not here. Uh, student loan was paid off after 22 years. Amen. Amen. So let's continue to be faithful to give not be generous in our giving. Amen. And God will bless us. One thing I know, your harvest is always greater than your seed. Come on, how many know that? Harvest is what? Greater than your seed. As you give, God bless you. And uh, what we do, we use it for the furtherance of the work of God. Amen. To take care of this environment that we are in. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We have our seed. Or some people are giving online. I'll give you time to give online. Everlastinglife.org Glory to God. Continue to give. You can't outgive God. God is a giver. 
God is the greatest giver. Amen. He gave life. My goodness. You know what I understand is that what God will not give us if you ask, if it's according to his will. If he give us Jesus, he gave us life. Have you ever thought about that? I said, oh, will you withdraw? Withdraw a little. How much? Hundred dollars? You want one thousand dollars? Five thousand? If he give life, he can give us anything that we need. But God is a God of purpose. Can I hear amen? amen? God is a God of purpose. As you give, God will bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Amen. Also, we're to give finance at everlastlife.org as for Zell and PayPal. Amen. May God bless you. Let us stand. Friday, we will be here. We have an in-person Friday service. Amen. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be great in person. Yes. Uh, we start at 7.30, but we'll be here at 7. Can I hear amen? We start at 7.30, but we'll be here at what time? 7. You know, I was taught you go before time, not on time. Amen. If you, if you shoot for on time, you will be late. That's how I was taught. I was taught in the military school. USA. No joke. Go before time, not on time. Yeah, let's get there. And April 7th, we're going to have that class at uh, starting 10 a.m. So prepare for it. You can do it. We can have some dialogue, uh, question, answers. It's going to go. We have time to open teaching. It will be short teaching because I want to give time for questions. Lord, are going to the school and uh, computer. Let's go. Amen. Amen. I know you will make it. I'm praying for you to be here at 10. Because we're going to start right on time. And I don't want you to miss anything. Honest. It's not going to be recorded. So be here. Amen, church. 10 a.m. Starting April 7. Amen. Because we're going to be discussing some personal things. No virtual, no soon. Let's go back to the old, old ways. 11 a.m. will be virtual. But no virtual, but be here. You will be blessed. Amen? Amen? And Friday will be here at what time? What time? Hello, somebody said 7 30. Who said 7 30? 7 p.m. 7 a.m. Nobody will be here. 7 p.m. on Friday. Friday is what? Good Friday. Come on, let's come and celebrate. Let's celebrate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's Good Friday, not Bad Friday. So let us be here Friday at 7 p.m. Amen? Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance. And the Lord give you peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let you guard your heart and guard your mind through Christ Jesus. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest, let it remain, and let it abide with us now and forevermore. And we shout, Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, Hosanna in the highest. Tell somebody else, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord.